It's not enough anymore just to make money. The days of being a pure capitalist optimizing profits seem to be coming closer and closer to an end. There was a time when a business was just a business, a for-profit machine, maximizing returns on investment at any cost. In today's environment, it's increasingly the case that customers, employees, and even shareholders don't think that's enough. At a minimum, the public wants companies to have a stance on political and societal issues, from Black Lives Matter to global warming. As a company, you better take a stance. Silence is increasingly becoming an unsatisfactory option. Go the silent route and you risk losing customers and possibly even employees. Investment dollars are also increasingly flowing to companies that have a high ESG score. ESG stands for Environmental, Social, and Government. These cover things like carbon emissions, community involvement, and shareholder rights. But does a high ESG score really tell us all that much and how useful is this system? That's what we're going to cover in today's video. My name is Dustin, this is Logical Finance. Make sure you hit the subscribe and notification bell if you're interested in investing, personal finance, and behavioral economic type videos. According to Morningstar, in the first quarter of 2020, ESG funds saw a flow of nearly $46 billion, and total assets in the funds had grown to over $800 billion. My guess is by the time I'm posting this video in early to mid-June, assets are pushing if not exceeding over a trillion dollars due to the recent market run-up. Now this number does not include investors that are buying individual company stock based on ESG criteria. This is just funds only, so there's clearly an appetite for this type of investment. And I completely understand that. I bought my first ESG fund about five or six years ago. And the reason I invested in ESG for the first time was really twofold. First, I thought it was just better use of my resources. I felt like investing in companies that were concerned about the environment, concerned about employees and these types of issues, it just made me feel a little bit better about where my money was going. And second, I thought there was an opportunity for increased performance. If a company's treating their employees better, you'd expect better performance from their employees. If they're worried about environmental issues, then you're less likely to have boycotts and protests against your company. If they're not pushing the envelope on legal and regulatory issues, then you're less likely to have a legal issue. And so that was my line of thought, and it was largely backed up by the research that I read at the time. But since then, the space has grown tremendously, and so I wanted to take a closer look and see does ESG really perform the task that it's supposed to do? And unfortunately, I found loads of issues. First of which is that ESG as a category is just far too broad. MSCI is one of the leaders in terms of asset classification. In total, they classify companies based on 37 total issues under the ESG umbrella. They review these companies based on these 37 issues and then give an overall score. Companies often have a good score, but do not score that well on some issues. So imagine if you took all 37 issues and ranked them from number one being the highest priority to number 37, the lowest priority that you really care about. Because of the nature of the rankings, there's a chance that a company or a fund has a high score based on criteria that you would classify in your 30s, but they don't score all that well on what you really care about. The second issue I found with ESG is that there's a high incentive for funds to be classified as an ESG fund. There's really two major systemic issues going on in the active mutual fund space. For one, you've got passive index funds and money has been consistently flowing out of actively managed mutual funds into passive index funds over the last several years. The reason is, is passive index funds have largely outperformed active funds and do so at a fraction of the cost. And so as an investor, why would I invest in something that's going to get me worse performance and cost me more? You combine that with this other large trend of the emergence of ESG type funds. And so if you can't beat someone at the game you're playing, one strategy is to play a different game. So just put yourself in the fund manager's shoes for a minute. You've got money flowing out the door left and right and has been for years going to the vanguards and the fidelities and other index fund providers. It's been going this way for years. Your performance has been trailing and you need a way to stem the tide and keep assets in the door as much as possible. You look over and you see this ESG fund trend. Assets are ballooning in this category and so now you have an incentive to go get classified as an ESG fund. The problem is you may not be all that concerned about ESG criteria, but your incentives are such that you want to be classified as a fund. So you do the bare minimum to check the box and get the classification. So as a fund company, you try to game the system. You name somebody the head of ESG, or maybe you create a whole ESG team. As so I've heard instances where an investment management team will keep their process intact and then tack on some ESG piece at the very end. The ESG person or team gives a final sign off, but they really have no influence on the investment process. And so when Morningstar or MSCI or some other type of review organization comes in 
and looks at your fund, you can point to your head of ESG or your ESG team. You can talk eloquently about them. You've got written procedures in place, but in terms of your investment process, it's really not core to the fundamentals. But currently there's over 3,000 different ESG funds that you can invest in. And unfortunately, if you just randomly pick one, chances are they're not gonna care all that much about ESG criteria. And even if you dig it lucky and pick a fund that is really concerned about ESG, Back to point one, they may not have the same priorities within the ESG space that you have. So let's talk about companies for a second then because the fund space is so messy. Well, if you go to the individual company level, they have largely the same incentives that the funds have. For one, because these issues are so political, you may get access to additional funding if you can tell a story or manipulate the data to show that you're concerned about the environment or political issues. There's been sustainability loans that are offered to companies that score well on ESG type criteria. If they're raising money, companies may get access to additional capital. They're more likely to get customers that are concerned about these social and environmental issues. They may even attract and retain better employees if they're concerned about these things. And so what do a lot of companies do? They issue a statement or a press release talking about their concerns. But often companies are just doing this as lip service to play the game. And so you kind of have to look at not what the company is saying, but what the company is actually doing. You know, one of my favorites is they say that some year way off in the future, they're gonna be completely on green renewable energy. So by year 2070, we're gonna be completely carbon neutral. The fact is the company may not even be around. It's almost like they don't even think that we're gonna notice that year that they tack on to the end of the statement. I mean, who really cares if 50 years from now, you're gonna be carbon neutral? There's a study done in an industrial line laundry company. And the company would take garments from companies, take them, wash them, dry them, and press them, and then return them back to the company. Due to the assembly line process that they had, it was very important for employees to be on time and absent. But unfortunately, this company had issues with employees either showing up late or just not showing up at all. And so management decided they were gonna do a raffle. They took all employees that had perfect attendance for the month and they were included in the raffle. Perfect attendance meant that you had no tardies and you had no unexcused absences. This program turned out to be a disaster. While the employees that were consistently showing up late or not showing up at all started showing up on time, what they found was a huge increase in sick days across all employees. What was happening was, is instead of showing up 10 minutes late one day, an employee, if he knew he was gonna be late, would just call in sick because calling in sick was considered an excused absence. The point is, if you have a program with rules in place, people are gonna find a way to game the system. In a working paper by Dana Reiser and Ann Tucker, they reviewed available ESG funds. They concluded that the variety and opacity of ESG funds leaves even a diligent and well-intentioned investor without assurance that an ESG investment, even more so one in an ESG index fund, will match her preferences. Further, one possible way to sort the range of ESG investment products is between lower fee generalist ESG funds and higher fee specialty ESG funds with a thematic investment focus such as clean water. This indicates that there may be a better opportunity if you niche down into specific focused ESG type funds. The problem is, is these often come at an expense. So you're gonna pay a lot more to invest in these types of funds. So don't just buy a broad ESG fund, buy a women's focus fund or a carbon emission fund. If you're really concerned about specific ESG criteria, try to narrow down and find a fund that specifically focus on that criteria. While you may have to pay more for this type of fund, chances are you're gonna get better results that are more aligned with your intentions. Another consideration is that ESG ratings don't necessarily mean that companies are doing good things. An ESG rank is often based relative to peers. So let's just say you're concerned about carbon emissions, for example. You might be surprised to find that MSCI classifies ConocoPhillips as a toxic emissions leader and average on carbon emissions. This is because the ranking is done on a peer-to-peer -peer basis. So compared to companies like Exxon or Chevron, ConocoPhillips performs better than those companies. But if you went into ESG funds trying to avoid oil and gas companies altogether, you might be surprised to learn that you're investing in ConocoPhillips because they're doing well on a relative basis. So ultimately the takeaway is that you can't just blindly invest into an ESG fund and think you're gonna get the results that you expect. Unfortunately, you have to do due diligence. You have to dig in, do some homework. If you're investing in a fund, you have to see what their actual process is, what companies are actually investing in. And when you're looking at individual companies, are they just paying lip service to these types of criteria that you're concerned about? 
Or are they actually taking actions that are measurable? One final thing that I'll leave you with is that being that these types of issues are such a hot topic these days, you'd expect market reaction to be really negative when some bad news comes out about a company. And turns out it does. In fact, the market generally overreacts. In a recent paper by Q and Daughtry, they found that stock prices tend to overreact to these types of events. This means that there may be an opportunity to buy a fundamentally sound company whenever bad social or environmental news comes out, given that the short-term reaction is often too negative. So that's going to be it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure you drop down and hit the like button. I've got a couple new videos that I'm coming out with. Not sure how long they're going to take me. They're going to be a little bit more involved. I'm really excited about them. So I hope you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss those. And I'll be back with you soon.